you have ahead of you 143 slides of Riverside history. I tried to put in as much as I possibly could, and I'm sorry if I forgot something, but you know, that's kind of the way this always goes. If you're really looking for something specific, come and see me and Haley or Matt in the, in the archives, and we might be able to get you hooked up with some, some good photos or good information. Saying that, I think we can get going on the Riverside story. Oh, by the way, I'm Tom Munson. Thank you uh, for, for joining me here today. You know the way I always begin these presentations. Um, the best place to start chronologically is at the beginning. So Sioux City starts in the winter of 1854-1855. The problem is we have this guy named Theophile Bruyere who comes to Sioux City to settle in 1840, 1849 at the, the joining of the Big Sioux and Missouri River. He was a fur trapper for the North American Fur Company. Um, he had been since the 1830s and decided to settle here in 1849. Of course, this name is familiar to many of you as one of his cabins, which had been relocated in the 1930s, is the present day, has a present day home in uh, Riverside Park and is the home of the girls of 68. Bure was not alone very long. Paul Paquette arrived, in River, arrived and settled in the northern part of Riverside in 1850. And below, you can see this building, um, which served as a grocery store and many things for years, was built in 1863 and is still standing in Riverside. But a little bit about why Paul Paquette was important. General Harney, you know, the Black Hills, Harney Peak guy, he built Military Road in 1855 for better access from Sioux City into Dakota Territory. This bypassed an old Missouri River Trail that had been used for 100 years before that. That other path, the old Missouri River Trail, was controlled by Bruyere, and we'll take a look at a map in just a moment to see where these things were. Paquette was also authorized by the federal government to operate a ferry over the Big Sioux River, uh, transporting Harney's troops into Dakota, and that was in 1855. Of course, that was all discontinued by 1867 when a wood piling bridge was installed over the Big Sioux River in North Riverside. This map shows the location. The green arrow shows Paquette's uh, cabin, and of course, the, the blue arrow is Military Road. This is the road that Harney built in the 1850s. Now, farther south, the red arrow indicates the path of the old Missouri River Trail, and that yellow arrow represents um, Bruyere's uh, uh, settlement at the southern end of Riverside Park. Jumping ahead a decade and a half, we have the first railroad line, the Dakota and Southern Railroad Company. This is the first railroad line to enter Dakota Territory on the 1st of October, 1872. This came from downtown Sioux City and would uh, headed toward Yankton, which was the Dakota territorial capital. Of course, this is a 1926 photo. Now that wood piling bridge was destroyed by a flood in 1881. So a second military road bridge was built in uh, 1882 and was there until 1922. The interesting story about this bridge, even though this is a, this is a believe it or not, this is the best quality photo I could find, um, the section, the, uh, the section on your right was the section which Iowa appropriated funds for in 1881, and it is a different style than the section for which Dakota Territory appropriated funds. They're different style bridges. <laughs> but getting down to uh, the kind of the two different area, uh, areas and the two different uses of Riverside, we have the southern part of Riverside, which is, a, which is a park, and then the northern part of Riverside, which is that industrial and residential area. Riverside really started, uh, Riverside Park area really started to get, uh, to get bustling by the 1880s. Sioux City was a fast growing city in the 1880s and early 1890s. The city grew from a population of 7,500 in 1880 to nearly 30, uh, to 38,000 by 1890. The downtown area and the, the, the urban area was kind of 
cluttered, and riverside as a wide open area along a river was an escape. These are some of the earliest images um, that we see of the recreational side of Riverside. Of course, this is uh, an image from a booklet called Sioux City Picturesque and Descriptive. This is sailing on the Big Sioux River in 1889. The YMCA had a boat club. You can see it here near the right side of the image. This was their boathouse, and this is also from an 1889 publication. Some of the earliest photos of Riverside. Now, with all of the activity going on in Riverside, the, this was a place where people of all, the wealthy, the poor, as long as you could get to Riverside, this was the area to be. However, there was a real estate investor named W.W. Byam who came up with this uh, residential area called Highland Park. This is an area that's up in the hills, just outside of what we would today consider Riverside, and he was going to try to develop this area as a, uh, as an, a residential area for um, Sioux City's wealthy, much like the north side developed uh, morning, or, and central morning side developed. You can see the proximity here. Um, Highland Park is this pink colored area designated by the, uh, the blue arrow, and Riverside Park, you can see down below in 1888, designated by the uh, red arrow. So W.W. W. Byam, who promoted the area, was one of Unfortunately, just a, a few, about three or four people, who actually managed to build their mansion in Highland Park. This is at, at 1747 California Avenue. And if you don't know where that is, you're not alone. It's a, a little bit of a street that stretches up just south of West 19th near uh, the Riverside Fire Station. If you're interested, the carriage house is still there. Of course, to develop a re residential area, you needed a means of transportation to get from your far-flung suburban area into downtown, where you invariably work. So Byam and others developed the Highland Park Railroad in 1888. You can see the black line are the lines of the Highland Park Railroad, and the southern line is the Riverside Park Motor Train. The area circled in red is Highland Park, and the tip of the arrow is the location of Byam's house. Here's a depiction uh, from 1890 of that southern portion of the transit line into Riverside. Uh, this is the Riverside, motor tr Riverside Park motor train in 1890. Ah, and one of the big tourist attractions to uh, Riverside was the Council Oak Tree. Now it's time for a little lesson. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. Myths are great, and they have their own value, but let's, let's talk a little bit about the Council Oak Tree fact and fiction. Lewis and Clark and Native Americans met under the tree. That is, pro that is not true. It's not mentioned in the journals of Lewis and Clark, much like meetings near present-day Homer, Nebraska, and present-day Yankton, South Dakota. There's also a myth that Chief War Eagle died under this tree. Well, there's a good chance he died nearby, but probably not under this tree, as Theophile Bruyer's daughter disputed this myth. War Eagle, his successor, was a chief named Smutty Bear. <laughs> okay, War Eagle, great name, Smutty Bear. Okay, maybe just a little bit silly. Um, the, he held council under the tree with members of the Sioux City Land and Ferry Company. Um, there, it, there is no indication that that happened because uh, after an initial confrontation between Cook and military forces in 1854, Smutty Bear traveled up the Missouri River so he was not in the vicinity after an after, uh, uh, army threat. Fact and fiction continued. Again, we have Smutty Bear, who we already determined was not here, met with other chiefs and medicine men to talk about the arrival of John Cook and General Lyon. Well, General Nathaniel Lyon didn't come here until the, uh, later, uh, later in the 1850s, until about 1855. So again, Smutty Bear was already gone. So now some really cool facts. The Burr Oak Tree, 
probably started as a sapling around 1680. The Council Oak Tree is not mentioned in any document prior to 1888. Riverside promoters made up the stories to attract visitors to Riverside Park and, and to encourage people to build homes in the Highland Park area. In the 1950s, the still living but hollow trunked tree was filled with concrete to help stabilize it. Might not have been a great idea. Fact, the rotted termite infested tree died in 1955. And you can see the photograph there. This is all that really remained of the Council Oak Tree in 1971 when it was finally uh, bulldozed. Again, myth and legends are fun, but here you have some facts. Oops. The real attraction for developing uh, commerce in Riverside were the clay beds under the Lost Hills. I'm sure there are a lot of people here, especially if you're a Riversider, remember either the brickyards there in operation or remember their remnants there. Um, well, there are still some remnants there. The first brick uh, company to locate in Riverside was the Sioux City Stoneware Company in North Riverside, established in 1888 by Charles Franklin Hoyt, William Gordon, William Stevens, James H. Hamilton, and Julian K. Prug. It was located um, just south of the present day uh, Sacred Heart Church School parking lot. Ah, I have a bad clicker today. The Sioux Paving Brick Company was located immediately south of the Sioux City Stoneware Company. It was also established in 1888 by, well, another guy we've already seen before, Charles Frank Franklin Hoyt, William B. Lower, and Madison B. Davis. This is located, this would have been located in the present day uh, Kirk Hansen Park. We see Charles Franklin Hoyt again and his Sioux City Vinegar and Pickling Works in 1890. This is located near uh, present day Riverside uh, Senior Living, Riverside Garden Senior Living on Bruner Avenue. So there we have some businesses established and we can start getting some people moving in if only we had some place for them to live. So the actual Riverside suburb develops um, in the southern section, um, North Riverside and Riverside Park additions are both platted in 1890. And then second and third filings are located just to the north of the original Riverside. You can see here and here. Those were platted around 1891. So the open land was actually divided into lots and homes could be built there. Now for some of the street names, it should come as no surprise that Charles Franklin Hoyt, who he's seen associated with three of the businesses there, had a street name for him. This street was changed to Bryan in 1911. Goldie Avenue was named for Hoyt's wife, Martha Harris Goldie. Florence, is named for Hoyt's stepdaughter, Florence Goldie Hoyt. And then Hornick Avenue in Riverside was named for investor Charles Hornick. Charles Hornick actually lived at 2727 Jackson Street, but was involved in the development of Highland Park and Riverside. Moving along chronologically, we get the Northwestern Sewer Pipe Company opening in 1891. This was started by W.W. Byam. That Highland Park promoter. It's located uh, on present day Ames Lawn Care. This would be the southernmost of the Riverside brickyards. Um, it closed in 1893 during the panic, um, but was reopened by William Lower and A.L. Stetson in 1901, and uh, about 12 years later would become part of Sioux City Brick and Tile Company. Some other early businesses it was the Renison and Elder Greenhouse located at about 15th and Riverside Boulevard. This would be just north of today's present uh, community theater. They started there in 1891. This is a pictorial booklet from 1890 showing the, both the recreation aspect and the industrial aspect of Riverside. You can see the vinegar and pickling works. You can see a nook in Riverside Park. You can also see something we'll get to in just a moment you can see a couple, of the, uh, a couple of the boat clubs. And the upper left-hand corner, you see 
a, ra uh, a roller coaster. So the Switchback Pleasure Railway Company built this roller coaster in 1889. Of course, this is an 1892 photo. The boat clubs. The first boat club established in Riverside was the Sioux City Boat Club in 1889, located present day, uh, located just south of uh, present day shelter number five. The uh, Sioux City Boat Club um, purchased the excursion boat Minnehaha, which you can see pictured here. Um, it was for use as uh, for pleasure trips on the Big Sioux River, where uh, passengers could see. Spots on the Big Sioux River, including Dot Island, or the Landslide, or a very uh, common practice, picnics and recreation in Minnewasika Park, which is today Stone Park. The next boat club established was the Riverside Boat Club in 1890, located just west of the present day Council Oak Manor. This is the Riverside Boat Club rowing team. They were the Iowa Club champions in 1900. You can see the names of the rowers there, Taylor, Sweeley, Prug Jr., and Canton. Oops. The Boat Club Pavilion, located just to the north of both of those clubs, um, was a venture of both of the boat clubs, uh, located just south of the present day Riverside Swimming Pool parking lot. Uh, other clubs were established in Riverside as well, recreation clubs, including the Inter-Ocean Wheel Club in 1890. They're obviously a cycling club. And tennis clubs. Both of the boat clubs had uh, tennis, uh, boat clubs had tennis teams. Ten um, however, tennis was so popular in the 1890s that both boat clubs had to uh, reprint bylaws stating that the club's primary activity was to be boating and not tennis, or bowling, which was also very popular. At the far south end of Riverside Park was a fairgrounds, Woodland Park and Fairgrounds. This was largely built around 1894, um, the grandstand and uh, the exhibition halls. Of course, horse racing was the big deal of the day. This is Robert J in 1895. The uh, Woodland, uh, Woodland Park uh, Fairgrounds were also home to the Sioux City Fair, which was kind of a successor to the Corn Palace Festival, it was around from 1896 to 1902. And of course, circuses that came to town would also perform at Woodland Park. The, eight, the uh, Sioux City Fair of 1896 um, one of the uh, uh, great exhibitions at, at that fair was the intentional collision of two railroad locomotives. Um, this was um, outlawed in the United States shortly after this photo was taken in 1896 because of uh, things like, you know, debris. And of course, along with the horse races, um, concerts were common, including the one you can see pictured here, Moses E. E. Flat Reed's band performing at Woodland Park. Just up the river, actually on the other side in South Dakota, you have William Barnes and his famous diving elk, which performed through the 1890s and into the early 20th century, not only here, but also um, around the Midwest and across the nation. The northern portion of Riverside Park was also used um, for occasional National Guard encampments. This is called Camp Stone, and this is a uh, their eight, the Iowa National Guard 4th um, Regiment uh, encampment in 1892. There would be also an encampment in 1893. Um, you can see this is taken from a hill above, and you can see the tents there um, in Riverside Park, Camp Stone, Iowa National Guard encampment in 1893. Um, the United States uh, Corps of Engineers wanted to make the Big Sioux River um, make the Big Sioux River have a navigable channel, much like the Missouri River had done with steamboats. So um, an ice harbor for safe harboring of steamboats was installed in 1895. This is actually right across from Riverside Park on the South Dakota um, side of the Big Sioux. 
large boats were in play, including the snag puller that James B. McPherson pictured here on the Big Sioux River in 1895, pulling tree boat snags. And this also made safe way for excursion boats like the Ida Blanche, which you can see pictured here in 1895. Where Camp Stone had been located, again, at the north end of Riverside Park, was Boyer's Field. Of course, that's baseball. This is, this happens, we happen to be seeing a game between the Hawkeyes and the Tutti Frutti um, in 1898. This baseball field, Boyer's Field, would be expanded uh, quite a bit just a, a couple years later. Um, by 1906, as this photo shows, a grandstand had been built around 1901. And of course, one of the major events there was uh, a game drawing 8,000 spectators between Sioux City and Omaha, 1908. And you can see here, a new grandstand had been built around 1907. Winter activities also abounded in Riverside Park, like ice skating on the Big Sioux River around 1899. But ice was also a big deal because it was a, it was a business. Keep in mind, we're living in an era here in these photos around 1900 where there is no refrigeration in your home. So you needed ice cutters on the river. And this is a photograph of Consumers Ice Company. And these guys are cutting ice off of the Big Sioux River. And you can see they're shooting them up a conveyor belt to be stored in these large warehouses. We'll see them in the next picture as well. You can see the ice houses in the background and a young North Riverside suburb. I wanted to note the smokestack here of the Lower Brick Company, because I, I want to stress how important uh, brick manufacturing was to Riverside, that two out of every three people in Riverside was employed by one of the three brickyards. You could see in that last photo, I could go back, but I, uh, Riverside School. This was the first schoolhouse in Riverside, uh, built around 1895. Um, it was at 19. 51 Nash Street, and was Riverside's primary school until 1914. With population also comes the uh, desire for churches, new churches to be located near your residential areas. So the Riverside Congregational Church at 2007 Nash Street built this structure in 1896. This would become Riverside Lutheran Church in 1936, and they used the building up until 1960. Now, I love to include family history in these things when I can. So this house, uh, just showing some of the early, what the early houses look like, 2101 uh, Roosevelt Street uh, was built around 1900, but from 1926 to 1942, this was the home of my great-grandparents. The Sioux City Brick and Tile Company located its second plant in Sioux City in Riverside in 1901. At the time this was constructed, this was the largest single um, brick plant in the state of Iowa. Of course, uh, Sioux City Brick and Tile plant number one was in the Floyd River Valley where um, Sioux Tools would later locate. Other brickyards, well, I meant, I've mentioned Lower just a little bit already. This is uh, the Lower Brick Company with what you can see there in the foregrounds are these continuous kilns and then the dome-shaped kilns in the back are Holman Kilns. This had formerly been Byam's Northwestern Sewer Pipe Company, and this would later become, in 1913, Sioux City Brick and Tile Company Yard Number Two. Here's just some inner workings of the Lower Brick Company. This is the manufacture of clay tile around 1906. And then inside those kilns, um, here we can see um, fired brick in uh, the uh, Lower's Continuous Kiln in 1906. The river, uh, Riverside um, Woodland Park was home to the Interstate Livestock Fair. Now the Interstate Livestock Fair was much like a, a, state, a state fair, like the Iowa State Fair or the Nebraska or the Minnesota State Fair, but the Interstate Fair was just was located here in Sioux City, drew in tens of thousands of people the 24 years it uh, was uh, around, uh, but attracted people from Iowa, Nebraska, South Dakota, and Minnesota. This happens to be a photograph of their midway around 1908. 
This is a livestock exhibition around 1922. And uh, this is a 4-H um, homemaking exhibition around 1919 in the main um, exhibition hall. A new track and grandstand were built around 1910. This, of course, is showing the many thousands of people in that uh, grandstand watching horse and automobile races around 1920. Going back to the boat clubs a little bit, both the Sioux City and Riverside Boat Clubs built new structures as their membership expanded. Um, this is a new Sioux City Boat Club um, in 1899. And the Riverside Boat Club got a new building around 1905. A couple of new boat clubs were established too around this time, including the Sioux City Yacht Club. Uh, this is located north of the Military Road Bridge in North Riverside. Uh, that club was established in 1904. For membership in the Yacht Club, you also had to be a member of either the Sioux City Boat Club or the Riverside Boat Club. The Commercial Men's Boat Club started in 1905. This might be a more uh, familiar building to some of you, as in 1913 it became Shore Acres Boat Club, which it was until 1966, and has been the Sioux City Community Theater since 1966. The Council Oak Boat Club, much farther south of all the boat clubs near, near the Missouri River, uh, was established in 1905. On the north end of Riverside, uh, where Military Road crosses uh, the Big Sioux River into South Dakota, was the Country Club. This is, uh, again, on the south side of Military Road. It was established in 1905. Um, when the Sioux City Country Club moved up to the end of Jackson Street, this uh, building became the home of William Lower. And Lower, again, has we've seen him uh, associated with Riverside for the last 25 years as the manager of one, of the, one or several of the brick plants. Here's another depiction of that country club taken from the Big Sioux River, and you can also see the Military Road Bridge uh, there on the left side of the screen. And again, recreation, still a key in South Riverside, and this is Marinus Sorensen's 102-pound catfish, caught in 1909. <laughs> Moving back up to the suburban area, we've seen manufacturings and we've seen churches. We also have grocery stores. Of course, grocery stores had been associated with Riverside long before this, but uh, this is the earliest image we have of one. This is a Nielsen grocery store at 2013 Riverside Boulevard. They were located there from 1910 to 1919. This building um, burned in a, a fire uh, oh, about 10 or 15 years ago. More greenhouses. This will not be the last greenhouse we see. This is the Riverside Greenhouse, um, operated by William Eubanks at 1742 Riverside Boulevard from 1911 to 1958. Um, the office section of this is, is today uh, a bar that's still standing in Riverside. Just wanted to show a couple more houses as well, since we have a couple of neat fo photo albums of houses. Um, this is the F.M. O'Connor House at 2111 Nash Street, built around 1912. Of course, this is a 1952 photo. Public transportation to Riverside continued long after the Highland Park Railroad had uh, had gone bankrupt in the 1890s. There was a consolidation of Sioux City's transit lines in the late 19th century and full consolidation by 1909. This is a depiction of the Riverside, Street, River, Riverside Streetcar Line on Military Road in 1913, depicting uh, conductor A.H. Amundsen and trainman Olaf Oyn. On the left side of the picture, you can see William Lower's house, which had formerly been the country club, and then in the background is the Military Road Bridge over the Big Sioux River. We're up uh, kind of on the hills. Riverside as a suburb is really starting to take off. This is looking to the southwest um, in around 1914. Um, this would be about above where the present day Sacred Heart Church is located. That increasing population demanded additional school space. This is Riverview Elementary School built in 1914 and used up until 2002 at 903 
right avenue. Interest, th incidentally, this happens to be the first modern school building, meaning it's uh, a fireproof construction. There are indoor restrooms, such conveniences. Um, sp speaking of fireproof buildings, this is fire station number eight, located at 2001 Riverside Boulevard from 1914 to 1928. This is a William Steele draw um, architectural drawing of that structure. The Glass Acres Greenhouse at 714 Bruner Avenue was established by Hanschett and Krunemeyer in 1915. This is a 1947 photo. Uh, this would later be operated by um, Rocklin and Lehman Flores, and later after that, Ferris Flores Greenhouse. And this closed in 1976. A Riverside map from 1911. We've seen almost all of the development in Riverside going on south of Goldie Avenue. And the, lar the northern portion of Riverside was largely under de und undeveloped uh, at that time. However, enter Edgewater Edition. The, the uh, three blue arrows are Edgewater Edition, and the red arrow, uh, Sokolov's Edition. Um, this is Julia Sokolov, who is talking about she wanted a, a street of homes, therefore she named a street in her edition Home Street. This is 1919 LaPlante Avenue in that northern portion of Riverside. This would be one of the first structures built in that north of Goldie Avenue. Um, from 1919 to 1926, this house is occupied by another set of my great-grandparents. Uh, now, this is about a two or three room house. I'll keep in, uh, when they left this house in 1926, they already had five kids. <laughs> now, uh, LaPlante Avenue and Witcher Avenue in North Riverside, they were both named for very early Riverside grocers. Oh, this is a fun one. The l business is expanding in Riverside. This is the Liberty Cartridge Company at 5010 Military Road. It was established in 1915. It wasn't around very long because it was eventually become fairway manufacturing. And then later than that, the Union Gravity Level Company in 1923. What's most fascinating about this, in 1924, this building, which had been uh, agricultural implement and ammunition factory, would be purchased by the Sacred Heart Catholic Church in 1924. So, if and they used this church building up until probably the 1990s sometime. Um, of course, the Sacred Heart uh, Parish was established in 1907. This is the Lauritsen Grocery Store on Riverside Boulevard around 1917 to 1958. You can see I borrowed some of these slides from my grocery store talk. 1917, a big event happens for Riverside, the relocation of the Milwaukee Railroad uh, repair shops. Um, that was in 1917. At its zenith, the Milwaukee Road shops employed about five, 400 people in North Riverside. This image depicts Milwaukee Road employees who are doing their uh, engine repair, engine and car repairs there. Camp Eaton was located in Riverside Park in the Interstate Fairgrounds. This happens to be a photograph. Well, you can see these are World War I enlistees training to dig trenches. This is 1918. Just a couple of modern scenes. The T.J. Halloran Building, which was a drugstore initially, at 2011, 2013 Riverside Boulevard was built in 1919. And you can see on the right-hand side of the image is a Sioux City Telephone Company equipment building, which was built in 1932. Sacred Heart School opened in 1920 in this two-room building. Uh, the building permit for this said temporary frame structure. However, this was used as their school from 1920 to 1962. And who could forget the Farmers Terminal Elevator Company at 1805 Riverside Boulevard, 1920? I bet none of you remember those grain elevators because they didn't exist. The building permit was issued in 1920 for an $800,000, 1 million bushel elevator system. It would have been the largest in Sioux City at the time. Pil pilings were put in, foundations were dug, but that's as far as the building got. 
and this project was discontinued because of an agriculture uh, recession in the early 1920s. You can see it ended construction in 1923, but there were parts of it built for sure. Oops, this is HF Mankey House, 19, or 20, uh, 2453 McKinley Street in 1921. This is a 1952 photo. Military Road Bridge, that old bridge that had been built in 1881 and 1882 was deemed, had long been deemed unfit for travel, especially in the age of automobiles and trucks. It was replaced in the winter of 1922, 1923 by a concrete bridge. And here is the dedication of that bridge in May of 1923. Riverside Pool opened on Independence Day in 1925. The Big Sioux Power Plant opened in October of 1925. The Bruyere Bridge, which would connect uh, West 4th Street to the southern end of Riverside, here you can see it under construction in December of 1925. The Thibodeau Grocery Store at 2101 Riverside Boulevard was around from 1927 to 1948, but this structure had originally been built as the Riverside Hotel in 1890. That building is still standing. Riverside Methodist Church built a new structure in 1927 at 617 Wright Avenue. Fire Station Number 8 relocated to 1909 Riverside Boulevard in 1928. Riverview Park, an amusement park in the north part of Riverside Park. Here you can see their giant swing. Here are Dante's Inferno and the Crazy House around 1950. Here is the carousel, also around 1950. Here is the Ferris wheel and the back of the uh, midget car uh, track grandstand. This photo also taken around 1950. Riverview Park, the Thriller roller coaster, around 1930. This was the third and final uh, roller coaster in Riverside Park. The switchback had been first, there was a figure eight, and then the Thriller. And of course, midget car races were a big attraction in Riverside for a couple of decades in the 40s, 50s, and into the early 60s. Riverside got itself a new library in 1930 at 717 Wright Avenue. This is still standing, it's a private home today. Ted's Cafe, you can see I also borrowed slides from my uh, restaurant talk. Ted's Cafe at uh, 5307 Military Road, 1931 to 1969. This is today Harvey's Restaurant. This is just a general view looking southwest, southeast on Military Road in 1936. The Riverside Food Market on the north side or south side of Military Road, 1941 to 1957. Here it's depicted in 1948. This is an aerial view of South uh, Riverside, looking south in Riverside from above North Riverside in 1946. Now I mentioned, uh, the, that terminal elevator company, the elevator company, you can see here the power plant, the greenhouse, and this foundation right here was built for that large eleva uh, grain elevator system. It's not just another general view looking southeast on Military Road in 1946. You can see from left to right the Council Oak Grocery Store, Ted's Cafe, and then over here on the right is Zortman Drug. The Bell Apartments at 519 Paul Avenue, and behind that on the right is the Edgar Giraud Barbershop at 515 Paul Avenue, 1947. Military Road, looking southeast again from Riverside Boulevard in 1947. From the left to right, you can see Grasba's Cafe, Miller Mobile Gas there in the center, and it's barely visible, but Size Tavern is over here on the right side. Dairy Queen opened its first location in Sioux City in 1948 in Riverside. 
Gordon Drive was another major connection between downtown and Riverside. Basically, all you had before this point was West 4th Street and Military Road and a very convoluted West 19th slash Edmonds Avenue kind of path. So this is construction of Gordon Drive in 1949 and dedication of Gordon Drive in August of 1949. We had a, it's a great set of crime scene negatives from the Sioux City Police Department in the 1950s. Now, not only is it an uh, overloaded truck on Military Road, yes, of, of course we can see that, but I like what's going on in the background too. You can see left to right, Nita Moore's Bar, Burke Lumber Company over here on the right, Gibbs Garage, and O.P. Skaggs Grocery Store. Probably unwise to have driven the truck with, uh, like that. <laughs> Oops. This is Riverview Pharmacy at 31, or 20, sorry, 2139 Riverside Boulevard around 1950. This building had been built by a Riverside carpenter, W.J. Higgins, in 1919. This building um, is still standing. It's a mattress store. Quonset huts were very popular in the post-World War II era, and Hardy and Pyre con contractors uh, had this one at uh, 5216 Military Road installed in 1951. You can still see the pyre or pear name um, on, on that, the top of the Quonset. Ah. Uh, this is, uh, of course, 1952. Riverside is uh, a low area and is somewhat prone to flooding. This is the Missouri slash Big Sioux River flood of April of 1952. We're looking to the north. In the center of the image pretty much is Riverside Boulevard looking from the south to the north. The Gordon Twin Drive-In Theater, around 1955, at the southern end of Riverside Park. Construction of Interstate 29 through the southern edge of Riverside Park in 1958. Now is where we get into where I started to steal things out of the Riverside High School yearbook. Riverside Hardware, uh, located at 2228 Riverside Boulevard. Th here it is depicted in 1958, although it started in 1922. Riverside Junior Senior High School opened on the 2nd of September, 1959. And one of the people in our audience today chose the name of the mascot, the Riverside Cavaliers. This is just a general overhead view looking east on Military Road around 1960. You can see some of the things I've already mentioned before, and you can see Sacred Heart there in the distance on the right. Paul's Drive-In at 2373 Riverside Boulevard, 1960 to 1971. A new Riverside Lutheran Church opened in 1960. It had started in 1936. The Interstate 29 bridge collapse of 1962. Uh, a poorly designed pier system and uh, ice precipitated this collapse. Billy Boy drive through opened in Riverside in 1962. The Riverside Community Center, located at 5408 Military Road in 1968. This structure had been built as the D.L. McLean Garage and Filling Station in 1923. The Riverside Community Center all had a, a safe, hosted a bicycle safety class in 1969, but you can see in the background Superior Speed Wash at 5848 Military Road, built in 1937 as the Brown Oil Company Filling Station. The Big Sioux River flooded again in 1969. Here you can see Riverside on the right-hand side of the picture and uh, North Sioux City there on the left-hand side. At the top of the picture, you can see the Milwaukee shops. You can see pretty extensive flooding in that area. These are people sandbagging or recreating uh, in, in preparation of the Big Sioux River flood in 1969. There was a Runza in Sioux City before there was one in the mall. This one at 2121 Riverside Boulevard for all of five years from 1970 to 1974. 
Zortman Rexall Drug at 5404 Military Road, pictured here around 1975. The structure that is located in was built by Morris Dinsdale in 1919, just for general retail purposes. Cowell's Bait and Tackle Shop at 5601 Military Road, pictured here around 1975. And yes, that building is still standing there. Construction of another military road bridge over the Big Sioux River um, took place in the winter of 1975-1976. You can see this image on the, the bridge, the new bridge is being constructed here in the center. And just to the left of that is the Bailey Temporary Bridge, um, which opened in October of 1975. And last but not least, after years of flooding, whether it was caused by the Missouri or the Big Sioux River, um, a uh, Big Sioux River flood control project was finished in 1980. And congratulations, we finished with a whole bunch of time to spare for questions. And thank you so much for coming. For a second, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it because I looked, I knew my halfway point in this talk. <laughs>